יוסי סאסי שלום. היי, אהלן. אה, in Hebrew, in English? In English. אוקיי, in English. Welcome to Culture Buzz. Thank you. It's very good to be here. יוסי, the pleasure and honor are all ours. 20 years with Orphanland, contributing to its great success, what we fondly call the Orphanland phenomenon. Nothing yeah. like it anywhere else in the world. And now, finally, you come up with your first album, solo album. And what an album it is. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very Can much. Can we have a pick? Uh, sure. Uh, there you go. That's the Melting uh, Clocks. Yeah. Melting Clocks, that's uh, my debut album as a solo artist. And, uh, Ooh, Mazal Tov. Toda, toda. And uh, yes, it's true. In a way, uh, releasing albums and working in the studio, etc. is uh, not uh, strange to me. Uh, being one of the co-founders, founding member and composer, producer of Orphan Land. And a brilliant guitarist. Thank one you. of the best you can find in Israel. <laughs> and maybe even beyond. Uh, well, it's, uh, I, it's like, I don't know if the guitar found me or I found her. By now, it's a love story that uh, we just continue to argue about it till today. A match made in heaven. Yes, definitely. It's uh, since I discovered the guitar around, uh, I think it was 30, almost 30 yeah. years ago. Uh, we've been inseparable and... Uh, I indeed founded the Orphan Land with my friends and uh, really early when uh, I began to compose the music uh, I felt that uh, the natural um, combination, combination that happened there, the mixture was of sounds from um, the Middle East and all sorts of uh, Arabic music, Greek, uh, Turkish, Egyptian music, etc. And I combined it with uh, the Western rock and roll music. What we, what we fondly call fusion. Yes. So we, we were the first to fuse in the early 90s uh, uh, heavy metal, heavy rock with uh, Middle Eastern and Oriental tunes. And in a way, indeed, Orphan Land is, uh, is my life's project. I've been involved in it, in it uh, since day one and I've um, uh, been contributing to it significantly for over 20 years now. But. Uh, you know, as a musician and especially as a as an instrumentalist uh, and composer, uh, you have a lot of ideas and a lot in you that uh, many times uh, the main band is uh, not sufficient for all you have to express and say. And throughout the years, uh, I've played with the idea to release something uh, and different. And finally, yes, finally the moment has come. Indeed. And. And we followed with admiration, Yossi, your wonderful lecture at TED. Yes. It was a very nice lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the idea to uh, talk to TED, to give a TED talk, uh, actually happened, uh, like many good things in my life, really in total coincidence. I sat down... The best uh, way. Yeah. It's really the best way for things to happen, naturally. I sat down with a good friend that I didn't see for years and I was, uh, you know, giving him uh, an up-to-date on everything that's happening with me, with uh, my career, my solo career and the fact that I'm uh, producing and uh, composing with uh, four artists from Kuwait to Portugal and the uh, great things that uh, music is doing today with the help of social networks for me as a musician. No borders anymore. No more borders, really eliminating the borders of uh, time and, uh, and space and, uh, and distance. So he said, you know, wow, it's, it's really a great topic for a TED talk. And I said, TED what? And the rest is history. <laughs> I really caught the TED auditions in the last two days before they were closing for this year. And just really quickly prepared some quick audition and and the, outcome, and the outcome is really, really impressive. Thank you. It's, it's really a, a short uh, portion of uh, the real lengthy uh, talk that I have on this topic, actually. Yossi, uh, let's uh, speak a bit about your new album, Melting mm -hmm. Clocks. Yes. 
it's no secret that it's being uh, sold all over the world by one of the biggest record companies, which means it's a very strong vote of confidence in you and in your music. Yes, I'm, uh, I, I am very lucky and I'm pleased to uh, be uh, signed for an uh, exclusive uh, distribution by uh, Warner Music, the uh, Warner Music Group in uh, Europe, uh, with the relevant affiliates, uh, Sony Music and others. And uh, for me, it's, uh, this also happened really by coincidence. Like I always say, for persistent people that act in goodwill, uh, luck will come maybe more frequently than people who don't. So <laughs> I keep persistent and luck keeps coming. Very good, it's me. working. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so, the album uh, is uh, mainly instrumental? Or, yes. you, or we can also hear you sing? Uh, the album is actually a sort of a shaknez, it's a really mixture, mixture. of uh, a fusion of few things. Uh, it's semi-instrumental and it's a sort of a, basically a rock album with uh, also songs in it. I sing there as well and also... Um, lyrics by you? Most of the lyrics by me and uh, Mary, Mary Weber. And also uh, Marina Maximilian Blooming ah, is uh, singing okay. there. And also a very talented uh, guest musicians there. Wonderful. Uh, Roy Zuarez, uh, Roy Zuarez that plays the piano, really talented pianist, and uh, Marty Friedman. Marty Friedman from uh, originally is Jewish, is uh, American and lives in over a decade now in Japan. He's really big in Japan, literally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, five Grammy nominations. Uh, he did an album with Kitaro, and uh, so and he's a really really good friend. Excellent. And uh, he also plays uh, guest uh, as a guest musician on this album. Great. And it's really a special album. You can find everything in it. There is a it's a concept album. Melting Clocks is really about a day in your life of everyone's life, possibly your life as well, uh, that speaks about uh, from when you wake up till the, the hour that we go to sleep and uh, really, uh, in a way, embodies the feelings and thoughts around the day and shows that uh, it's built in a way that it ends and starts in the same note and shows that if you don't change what you always do, you always keep getting what you always get and calls for you to recheck your routine and how you can melt your clocks. Amazing. In the modern world. You know, when I saw the album for the first time and the title, the immediate thought I had was about Salvador Dali. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. I looked for a painting. <laughs> it's true, the, the Dali has the, this, the, this right. kind of uh, melting clocks. Yeah. And he has a famous painting called The Persistence of Time. Right. And uh, a lot of uh, people uh, have this uh, immediate association with uh, the Dali famous painting. Which is not a bad thing. Yeah, it's not a bad thing, although uh, it, it didn't come from there, actually. It's more about the, uh, uh, being a concept album, the idea of playing with the concept of time. time. And a day in, uh, in life, in the modern world, and how we can uh, possibly do things differently, if we just dare to. So, since we are uh, talking about time, and we touched a bit about the past and the present. How do you see the future? Well, the future is very bright and busy. Great. <laughs> and pink. <laughs> yeah, pink and busy. Think about a busy pink thing. You see my future. <laughs> it's, uh, well, a lot, of, a lot is happening in my plate right now. Uh, I'm uh, composing uh, a new album for Orphan Land. Uh, we just started working on uh, another album for 2013. Great. And uh, I'm also composing music for uh, more works uh, and more productions of, uh, of mine that will be out and released later on. A second album? Uh, yes, possibly a second album. Not that quick, but uh, it will take, I think, a year or two. But uh, still, I'm uh, just uh, composing music all the time as I go. Excellent. And I'm producing some uh, very uh, promising artists, uh, both here and abroad. And I'm cooperating with musicians from Kuwait and from Portugal and doing some very nice collaborations uh, that I can announce soon. And um, I'm also uh, going out on a European tour with Excellent. Marta Friedman. Excellent. When? In, 
uh, in October. Where are you going? Uh, London, Dublin, Madrid, Barcelona, Paris. It's almost a month of uh, shows in Europe, mainly West Europe this time. Uh, but this will be extended to a worldwide tour and we're really hoping to announce really quick uh, and soon the uh, dates for a, a US tour, North American tour, really? USA and Canada. Excellent. And also maybe some shows, some shows in uh, other parts of the world. So really, Great news. Yeah, definitely. Exciting news. Definitely. And in Israel? How often do you get to perform? Uh, in Israel, uh, I perform less, much less, but uh, when I do, it's really a big celebration. And one is coming up, right? Yes, in, really quick. In uh, the harbor in Tel Aviv. Yeah, just uh, really soon, in uh, Friday, uh, August 10th. August 10th, we'll yeah. try to come. Yeah, you should, you will. <laughs> <laughs> You're invited, really. In, uh... Let me rephrase it, we are coming. Yeah. So in uh, uh, Friday, uh, August 10th, uh, I'll be uh, performing in uh, Tel Aviv at uh, Reading 3 in uh, the Tel Aviv uh, port. And uh, there I'll be hosting uh, some really great friends and musicians, uh, Diana Golby and Roy Zuarez. Uh, and uh, Roy Friedman and uh, Michael Cobrin, Wonderful. which I'm also producing musically. And we'll do some special covers as well for quite known songs, as well as songs from Melting Clocks and songs from Orphan Land uh, repertoire. And it will be a great celebration. Excellent. Sounds really wonderful. Thank you. Before summing up this uh, pleasant conversation we had, when you are looking back, at your life, as a person, as a musician, as an Israeli, as a citizen of the world, trying to build beautiful cultural bridges with everybody via music. If you had to sum up with your motto, what would it be? I would say uh, there are many sentences that I could uh, easily write a book about the things that I act upon and the values that I uh, that guide my way. So we can expect uh, a book? Maybe someday, but uh, I would say if I have to sum up everything to three words, there would probably be uh, choose your attitudes. Because I think really uh, as a grown-up uh, there is one one very special thing that we are given that we don't have as children and uh, as children we have many uh, advantages over adults you know we have no obligations we have uh, much less uh, moral knowledge and understanding of the things that happen around us and we have a rich imagination and no boundaries we've yet to encounter the you know the glass ceilings that uh, surround us later in life no fears no boundaries sounds like uh, pink floyd's uh, the wall <laughs> in a way yeah so we are in a way we are uh, really fresh like uh, white uh, innocent white innocent sheep just waiting for every, everything to happen but as an adult i think that the number one tool the number one uh, thing that i have to work with is my attitude and I think this is really a huge thing as an adult. And that's something as a child I didn't have. I had a lot of other things. But this, just for this, it's worth uh, to, to be uh, in this world as a person and, and to behave according to that. Because, you know, life will uh, many times hit you on the head, you know, and uh, things will never go like you plan. And the only thing that you can really choose all the time is your attitude to everything that happens and I'm a very optimistic person and there's always a I always see the full half of the cup as we say and you know I have numerous examples uh, of my diverse uh, routine uh, the latest one would be uh, probably for my latest invention the Buzukitara as I call it uh, it's a hybrid uh, it's really a, a, an instrumental embodiment of uh, my musical journey, of who I am. Congratulations are in order. Yes, thank a you. A wonderful invention. Thank you, and uh, it really came after uh, hard work. And it's basically a double-necked uh, guitar, uh, two souls, two instruments in, in one body. A full 
uh, electric guitar, really Gibson like, very strong electric guitar with great sound, uh, top quality and uh, connected uh, like a Siamese uh, twin to uh, a traditional acoustic buzuki. Where was it built? Uh, it was built in Israel according to my design with the help of the talented luthier Benjamin Miller. Uh, but the story around it is that uh, when I first came with this to uh, luthiers, to guitar builders, they told me uh, it's impossible. It can't be done. It can't be done. And they uh, showed me all the time the difficulties. Why it cannot the difficulties. happen ergonomically and physically, the difficulties. This instrument needs a lot of uh, acoustics, the other needs a lot of air, uh, wood to vibrate and resonate. And, and Finally, I went to a person that understands more in pianos and built and fixed pianos in his past and just recently makes guitars and I think the... and he said, okay, let's go to the moon, so... You know, you have to choose your attitude. When you've been told no, understand why or why you've, you have been told this answer and go back. And even if you don't understand, try to go back from a different angle and uh, I think in a way, that's why Orphaned Land exists. That's why the things I do uh, happen. And uh, my attitude uh, and reshaping it really helped uh, for me to accomplish all the great things that uh, I'm very lucky to have in my life. A wonderful attitude. Yossi, I don't know how we manage to <laughs> complete this conversation without even mentioning Petah Tikva. Ah. <laughs> where it all began. Yes, definitely. Uh, uh, a, a, a bridge for hope, or uh, I don't know how to call it anyway, Malabes. Uh, if you translate it to English, it will be something like yeah. an opening for hope. An opening for hope, yeah. Um, yeah, Petah Tikva is the city uh, I was born at, and the city I currently live at. Uh, yeah. I, I lived a bit in uh, in Paris for a certain period of time, and then in Tel Aviv. A bit different from Petah Tikva, a little bit. Quite, yeah. And then in Ariel, in uh, Judea and Samaria, and uh, then in uh, Tel Aviv, and then back to Petah Tikva. And I think, uh, you know, my studio is here, my family is here, uh, all all my uh, my most important things in life, and the people that I love. And it's true that as a musician and artist, uh, many times I find myself uh, on the road and abroad. And I just came back recently from East Timor, and uh, soon I'll go back to Turkey, uh, and then uh, the European tour, and then the U.S., etc. But for me, it's Petah uh, Tikva feels uh, familiar. Uh, it's uh, it's really the landscape of my childhood. So. So if we look deep enough and hard enough, yeah. we can find Petah Tikva in your music too. Yes, and even in specific places, if you insist. <laughs> if you really listen between the lines and the beat, you can find some Petah Tikva some rhythm. Petah Tikva rhythm. rhythm. <laughs> Yossi anyway. Sassi, this has been a great pleasure. Thank you. To Daraba, we wish you all the best, all the good luck and the success. <laughs> And we will try to do something about our attitude. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, <laughs> Shalom, shalom. <laughs>